not get in cover. <laughs> this would all seem so quaint. And so last century, if it weren't such a tragic reality for sinners. Guilt does to sinners just what that training film tried to do to school kids. When the judgment comes, when the bombs start dropping, when the you-know-what hits the fan, what are you going to do? Duck and cover. Adam and Eve sought cover in the bushes when God came calling in the garden. Jacob ducked out the back door when Esau came looking for the cheater. Peter ducked his head in denial and covered his assets with lies when the crowd associated him with Jesus. You? You, my fellow sinners, duck and cover. Every time you deny the totality of judgment, Every time you duck behind the law, rearranging it, reducing it, bending it, so you can find tolerance and acceptance for your behavior. Every time you cover your actions with the excuse, I thought I was doing God's will. Every time you throw a handful of feathers into the air and duck behind them, you think you can cover your deeds by claiming it's the work of the Holy Spirit. You sinners. You duck and cover every time you think you can place a part of your life outside of God's condemnation and wrath. But you only curve more deeply in upon yourselves, committing that most original of sins, looking to yourself and your own experience and not to the Word of God. Listen, listen to Jesus' words. Heaven and earth will pass away. All creation and everything in it. All heaven and everything in it. All creatures, including humanity. All, everything, gone. The judgment is complete, total, nothing escapes. Nothing mortal escapes God's condemnation and wrath. Unlike the preachers of doom, unlike the purveyors of apocalyptic cataclysm, unlike the voting members of a church-wide assembly, Jesus has no interest in giving you an escape clause, of selling you a survival strategy, so you can join the practicing remnant or of teaching you to duck and cover on that great and terrible day. No, when the rest of the world feels faint from fear and foreboding, when the rest of the world observes these things taking place and hears an echo of Flip Wilson announcing, here comes the Dutch. Here comes the judge. No. While sinners, fearful and faint in their guilt, duck and cover, Jesus says to those with ears to hear, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads. Jesus says to you, my fellow sinners. He says to you, his betrayers. He says to you, the very ones for whom he died. He says, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Guilty sinners cower and hide their sin, ducking behind explanations and covering themselves with excuses. But you, you who have ears to hear the whole word of God, law and gospel, command and promise, you know that sinners and only sinners receive the word of forgiveness. And in such knowledge, 
and in such knowing, you as forgiven sinners have no need to duck and cover. But since your sin is forgiven, you can indeed stand tall and raise up your head. The end of the world is not an event for you to fear. You who know that you are forgiven sinners. During these days of Advent, when we look backward to Jesus coming into time, during these days of Advent, when we look forward to Jesus coming at the end of time, during these days, learn well, my fellow forgiven sinners, that none of us is more than one breath away from the end of the world. And that end is nothing to fear. On the day of your baptism into Christ, you were given the only survival strategy you'll ever need on the day of Christ's coming again. Baptized into our Lord's death and resurrection, your saintly life has been hidden away with Christ and God, safe from all mortal afflictions and temptations. Your mortal life awaits here, condemned by sin, yet confident of the life of Christ which it has in faith. You, my fellow forgiven sinners, you and I can greet the signs of the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and greet Him, not with a duck and cover, but with a confident stance and an upraised head so you can look your Redeemer in the eye. Your Redeemer will have you the same way he's always claimed you in death and resurrection by your dying and being raised to new life. The judgment is coming. The end is upon us all. But we can stand and take it like men and women, sinners, for whom Jesus died. Thanks be to God. Amen.